Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to episode 10 of the Hungry People podcast. My name is Michael Patrick Buckley, and I'm here with my co-host, AJ Dybka. On today's episode, AJ and I are going to be having a discussion on calories. And this episode is going to be a bit of a different format than usual. We each have three questions, and we don't know each other's questions. And we're going to pose our questions and just have a discussion on each question. So uh, I hope you guys are excited for this episode as... AJ and I are. We don't really know what's going to happen, but <laughs> uh, we're ready to rock and roll. AJ, what's going on with you, man? Living the dream. Super excited. Boom, boom, boom. Nice, dude. Yeah. Arnold. I'm ready. I'm ready to get into it. Awesome, dude. I am too. I am too. We know that uh, calories are usually always a pretty big topic of discussion. And I know there's some people out there who like to totally disregard calories, say they, that they don't not mean anything. They do not mean anything. So um we'll bring that up today give our thoughts on that so well you have the other <laughs> side of it too where people think it's the most important right well. that's like the only thing that matters is calories totally totally anyways aj if you don't mind i'm gonna i'll pose the first question here let's do it if that's cool with you so my first question is if you exercise more than you usually do do you need more calories so let's just say that you have an individual who does their normal walking, right. um, maybe they do yoga, whatever, and they're trying to lose weight. So they're like, okay, well, I'm going to exercise more and I'm going to bring my caloric intake down because that, that's what most people do say is that burn more and eat less. Um, so do you think that we need more calories if we exercise more? Or do you think that we need less calories if we exercise more? Well, I think that the original question being like, if you exercise, do you need more calories? Right. Addressing that specifically first. It completely depends, in my opinion, uh, on a few factors. So one of them being like, let's say you're someone who's an ultra endurance cyclist or runner. Mm -hmm. I think burning fuel and, and refueling while you're running because you're out for so long that you can't not eat. So let's right. say you're going for a 24 hour bike ride. You know, at some point you're going to start needing to take in fuel because you're burning through your reserves. But I think there's a, there's a, with that, I feel like it's almost unlimited to how much you can eat and how much you need. Mm -hmm. And then of course, when you're done, you're going to have a big meal after to replenish fully because during you're just supplementing, you know, as you go, totally. you're not going to be eat like a huge meal in the middle of a ride. I can also see too, not to interrupt you here, but I, I can also see too, that like after your long endurance ride or your long bike ride, you're probably burning through those calories too, that, that you're just putting in. Let's say you do have a big meal after you, yeah, yeah. after you do a, a, a long bike ride or a long, a long run. Like I can imagine that you're already burning through those calories that you might even need more extra on the side. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, what I was going to say is like, you are burning. I do think you are burning that as, as you're going. Right. But for the people who are doing a large amount of exercise, that's not an ultra endurance, you know, version of that. Mm -hmm. They might have um, more of an appetite and they will need more calories, but I think there's more of a ceiling when it's like, you've been, you know, lifting weights an hour a day and you, you know, you go for a walk and things. I don't think it jumps from like, a two or three thousand calorie need to like a five thousand or right. ten thousand just by doing even intense workouts i think right. that the the way that you need lot like these large numbers of calories eight to ten thousand is going to be from that consistent low grade endurance type of fuel burning right whereas intensity and uh short burst i think it's uh more limiting i think people exaggerate how many calories you'll need Mm -hmm. Um, and I do think there's a ceiling. I know McDougal and, uh, I believe Lyle as well stand by that, that there's going to, yes, exercise will require more calories, but there's usually going to be a ceiling right. in terms of a daily intake. So let's say like your daily normal intake for what you would need is 2,500 or 3000, something like that for an adult male, it might go to 3,500. Mm -hmm. It might increase by like 500 calories, but it's not just going to double based right. on like, you just start working out. I mean. Totally. Yeah. I think I definitely, I definitely agree. And I think the type of exercise is really the biggest factor here. Mm -hmm. So it's not even really the caloric intake, but it's the type of exercise. So 
from my own personal life and my perspective last year, I was on the bike four or five, six times a week, getting after it, putting in a ton of miles. And I'll tell you what I was, I was very, I was very hungry. I was actually like, I felt like I was so stressed. That's how hungry I was. And I just want to like, keep eating and keep eating and keep eating. And I think that, I think, I think there was, uh, there were a few other reasons outside of just the exercise, but um, I do believe that because I was burning through so much on the bike that my body did need more energy that it didn't need more fuel to come in my body. Yeah. And um, I don't, I don't think I would have got, I don't think I would have gotten that same reaction if I would have just kept doing my normal workouts throughout the week. Right. So and there's, I, two, there's two types of exercising, like there's zone one and zone two, mm-hmm. there's fat, you know, you generally, you're staying in a low heart rate and you're burning fat, but once you mm-hmm. go over a certain threshold, you start burning gl- glucose, carbohydrate, glucose drive in ATP. So now you, you run out of that quick. You're like, okay, you need to refuel right. those sugars. Right. Uh, the longer it goes, the more this gets affected, but like you can usually stay in a fat burning zone, which I would say probably isn't kicking up your metabolism too high, but I would think that the, the, uh, the latter would. Well, if you, if you stay in zone one, isn't that more of the, the fat burning, like the fat right. burning zone, but you're, that, that's, you're just like keeping it easy. That's like, like if you're running, that's kind of like just a jog. And if right. you're biking, yeah. you're just not real. Like you're just kind of going from like a joy, jolly ride. Correct. Right, right. And you're going to go through less glucose quickly. Not that you won't go through any. Right. I'm saying like you're going right. to have less depletion. Right. Um, even from like a running and a biking perspective, I definitely think that you burn through more while you're biking than while you're running. Would you agree with that? Yeah. There's something about cycling and swimming that just. Oh, swimming. I, I didn't even think about swimming. I can they, imagine. I mean, burn through the, I mean, I even, you could probably even say that swimming, you might even need more. I mean, what did Michael Phelps say? He eats like a million calories a day or something. Well, he eats 8,000, <laughs> which I can eat more than but like <laughs> with no exercise. <laughs> Yeah, he's not bad. I mean, he's eating like three, three or four times a normal person. Right, right. But I mean, I can like I know even, like even when you on when you are on the bike and you're holding on to the to the gears and the um, handlebars. I mean, you you are essentially using those muscles. So I can see like I can see you are like forcing your body to do to use the upper body. Um, but really the bike's all about the lower body, the legs, but when you're swimming, I mean, that's a full body workout. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you're, you're, I mean, obviously it's I mean, running is pretty similar as well. as well, but I feel like the sw- like swimming is more of a full body workout than that. And it's running and strenuous, biking more strenuous too. Totally. Like cycling's easy. Like you can easily go for a two hour bike ride and it's not really a big deal at all. Right. You go right. for a two hour walk. It's more exhausting, way <laughs> more exhausting than a two hour bike ride. I guarantee it. Go walk for two hours. It's way more. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No I walked, doubt. I walked 10 miles after I got off work one day. I walked home. I was, I got off at 8 PM. Took me till midnight to walk home. I lived 10 miles from my work. And I was like, this is one tenth of a hundred mile ultra marathon. I felt like I was walking for days <laughs> and it was in the dark. So it made it seem way longer too. Wow. That's uh, but, it sounds, it kind of sounds exhilarating if I'm being honest. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was really cool. And it's so <laughs> weird though. But like when I started getting in the cross country and running, I would go for, I was faster. So mm-hmm. for, like, I would like run, let's say five or six miles quickly. But if I started to get like a cramp or some kind of like reason to start slowing down, it was really hard for me to run slow. Like my muscles weren't really that capable of doing that steady stream of exercise, uh-huh. but the running, because it's over, let's say in a half hour and an hour, if you're running slower, it's over in two hours. So it's more of like a strain right? in different parts. Not the cardio oh, wow. was easy, but the, the muscle wasn't there. The, the so you tonality. would just, so essentially you would just keep pushing through like a cramp or if you, if you felt something off, you that would make you go faster. Is that what you're saying here? No. What I'm saying is like most of the time when I was running, I would run as fast as I could because if I ran slower, I almost couldn't finish the oh, run because my oh, legs would start to be so exhausted. Oh, okay. My okay. Okay. Fine, okay. I see what you're saying. Legs. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. I see and what you're it's, saying. It's now. like with the bike, it's like, it's so easy. Right. To just be in that like easy gear, just spin it. 
Right. And I feel like that's why it almost like it catches up on you. The fact that you've burned so many calories. It's like, whoa, I did. It's like, I didn't really even do much, but you right. did in reality. Right. Um, interesting. Uh, I know AJ, I, I think we both answered that question pretty thoroughly. Yeah. Um, I think we both can definitely agree that if you are exercising more, especially if you are biking, running, um, swimming, that you you probably do need some more calories in you just to refuel, especially if that's what you're doing. Like if you are training for something and um, that's your goal, then definitely, definitely include getting some more calories. Um, and AJ, I know my apologies. I did ask a second question or give me two questions after that original question. Uh, we can talk about that later. Or if you want to get into your, your first question, that'd be great. Yeah, just a simple one. How many calories should you eat as an yeah. individual? If you want to yeah. go first. Yeah. Um, my my answer to that is definitely it just depends on your goals. It really depends on what you're trying to to get after and to gain. So I uh I think if you are um someone who's just living a normal life and you're not really pushing your body as, as hard as, as, as it possibly could. And let's just, let's just, let's just, let's just assume, let's just say you're going to work and you have a family and you come home and um, you have kids and you take care of your kids, you know, whatever, whatever it may be, just a nice, simple, um, nice, simple life. Uh, I, I, I think it's important to, to, eat as much as your body requires. Now that is, that's a phrase that I've used on my Instagram page uh, over the past year. Eat as much as your body requires. Um, and what does that really mean? And to me, that means that if you're hungry and you feel like you really do need food and you're, it's in your mind, it's in your head, and that's all you're thinking about, then I think you should eat. Now, the type, obviously, the, the type of calorie, the type of food that you're eating is going to really depend on what your, your body looks like, your composition. You know, there's definitely a lot that goes into it. But um, to answer your question, AJ, how many calories does someone need? It's, it's going to really, A, depend on their goals, and it's as much as your body requires. So like I was saying earlier, if you are working to be an athlete and you're training for, uh, let's say you're, you're training, let's, let's put all three together. Let's put biking, running, and swimming together. Let's say you're training for a triathlon. You're going to need more calories. So you, um, you're going to want to definitely, you know my turn. You know, you know not my turn, but <laughs> I guess during my turn, you're going to want to carb up, you know, especially for those endurance-like type sports. Um but like I was saying earlier, for the everyday, ever, everyday average person, I guess to pull like a quote unquote caloric number on it, to put a quantitative number on it, I'd probably say um, between 2,000 and 2,400 calories if you're not really like exerting that much force and energy. I'm sure that's pretty, that might, that might even be too much for some people. And I know people who actually eat lower than that on a day-to-day -day basis. And you, you know what's funny though? Most people probably don't even care. They probably don't even look and see how much they're eating. They probably just like, they probably just like eat, they snack, they snack, they do this, they do that, they do that. You know, there's no structure. There's no structure to their day besides, besides their work, you know, and someone like me, I'm, I'm I always have structure with my food. I'm, I'm always prepared. I'm always ready to go. I always know, okay, I'm going to eat here. I'm going to eat here. and I'm going to eat here. And that's what I, that's how I've been my entire life. Right. So I know I talked a lot there. <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, <laughs> if you had any thoughts, how my many calories? Thought, my first thought was when you said, that's how I've been my whole life. It's like, it's your genes. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely in my genetics. You're, you're I, highly conscientious. Yeah, I, uh, I, I get that from my dad. That's for sure. Yeah, right. That's just the structure. So, right, right. Um, so, yeah, for me, like, how do you, how many calories did you eat? Uh, just to step back for one second and be like, okay, what can, what can really interrupt if you're trying to figure out how many calories you should be eating, whether it's you need more or less. And I think that pulling temper, even temporarily out 
things that are stimulants and caffeine and appetite yeah. suppressants and all these things, you'll be able to see like, without that, are you like zombie land? Like mm-hmm. you can't keep going because usually you're running on that stimulation, which isn't calories, which isn't fuel, which isn't nourishment. Right. It's just stimulation. Right. I think that can help to get clearer on exactly what your natural appetite is and how much you want to eat. Now, you know, Doug Lau talks about the pleasure trap and things being hyper stimulative. So it's like, you know, let's say you just want to listen to all your, like, um, I'm going to listen to my body. My body wants cheesecake tonight and it wants Doritos and pizza. Right. It can, it can skew it. You know, we have to, we have to take it with a grain of salt to, to listen to our body because our bodies could want to snort a line of cocaine. Right. And it's like, these things can, uh, because of the, the pleasure aspect, because of the dopamine and serotonin, all these things released, it can mm-hmm. skew what we think our natural needs are. Mm-hmm. And I think a good way to assess that is to use like mo- less processed foods. I'm, I'm not saying don't eat, ever eat processed foods, but things that are less processed, rice, corn, potatoes, beans, peas, lentils, fruits, vegetables, even if you eat meat, if you drink dairy, if you eat, you know, well, cheese is processed. So it's like that, that already, like how many of you think of cheese and it's like, it's so exciting. Well, it's full mm-hmm. of salt and it's way more calorie dense than milk. And to keep these things in mind, uh, to help narrow it down. I think that if you were going to eat, you know, 2000 calories of potatoes versus 2000 calories of potato chips, it's so vastly different. I can mm-hmm. eat, uh, I could eat 4,000 calories of potato chips in like 30 <laughs> minutes. But if I was doing that in potatoes, which I have done, <laughs> <laughs> one gets you through like a few, like a, like an hour or two. And the other one will get you through a whole day or two. Right. Right. So keeping that in mind that the, the, the caloric density does affect it. You know, a teaspoon of oil is 140 calories, which is like almost two baked potatoes or two apples or two, whatever, right. almost. Uh, so if we, if we take out the caffeine, if we look at the caloric density, if we look at the, if the thing is covered in salt, sugar, fat, which increases the caloric density mm-hmm. because these things are heavier, um, that helps to control it. And then I think that, you know, there's two different schools of thought. There's, the like you need to get enough calories in pretty much pretty much everyone in the scientific community will agree like you need to have enough calories yeah and i think that's pretty reasonable i think like 2000 sounds like the the baseline of like where to start and if you exercise or you just have a naturally bigger appetite you know it gets adjusted from there Mm -hmm. probably a safer point for someone who's of our height and weight would be more like 2500 plus right what were we going to say? Yeah. And I was just say like, you, you could even say that maybe some person, maybe someone does have a pretty, a pretty rapid metabolism mm. and they might, maybe they do for some reason, whatever reason they, maybe they do burn through food a lot faster yeah. than someone. Maybe someone does need more than someone else. Yeah. And we, so. yeah, it's exactly. We have to take in specific people. Like if, you, if you're trying to address anything, it should be specific to you because you can hear like you should have 2,500 at your weight. Right. And like, uh, someone we talked to on Instagram, Cassandra, she said she was doing 10,000 calories before it was like a thing. And she would said her that, you know, she would be accused of like anorexia and things because like hormone levels affect it more than anything. I mean, you could talk to Durian Ryder and mm-hmm. he'll say like inject when he was injecting testosterone or whatever into himself, it added on the muscle like crazy, even at the same amount of calories. Right. So there's more at play. There's like hormone levels, there's hydration issues. There's all sorts of different things that come into play. Like I've said, you know, a dozen times on this podcast, if you're not absorbing your sugars and you're urinating them out, let's say you're taking in a thousand calories of sugars and you're only getting 700 of it. So you're literally like, overburdening your body in a way and you're not even getting what you should be getting in mm-hmm. fact it stresses the kidneys and it stresses your your system a little more as a result and you might need even more calories uh so some of these things come into play now that's like the it's like the could to give you the simple answer i think for a woman prop like an average size woman 120 pounds 125 pounds mm-hmm. uh five foot four five foot five it's probably around 2000 i think that 20 2000 to 2500 is pretty reasonable i think that for a male like i'll use myself as the example or you we're about six foot i'm 150 it's about 25 to 3000 but then we always like i said we have to take people's specific uh conditions and issues into play and the other example that i usually give is like i was eating two to three thousand calories of fruit and starch and i couldn't get above 135 pounds and then I focused on 
green juice, which is basically no calories. And I was using things like pure dime, raw vegan protein, um, enzymes and salad with some fat. And if you mm-hmm. look at my diet, it was still only like 1500 calories, but I was able to finally bridge the gap of that 15 pounds and gain up to 150. So it's not that I don't think that I'd need it a right amount of calories. It's just, I have this thing where I say, address the need. If the needs are being met, it's going to help you come to homeostasis versus, you know, just going by some kind of ideal. Just off that example there that you gave, would you, would you just more or less assume that your body was absorbing and utilizing the, the calories much better than the starch and the fruit that you're eating? And, Honestly, they, I, and that, that allowed you to, to actually reach your, like reach what you wanted to reach with your weight. Yeah. And I think that, you know, let's say someone has a weak digestive system, right. They're having mm-hmm. digestive issues. And in order to get enough, even though it's really easy on pretty much on any diet to get enough protein as a vegan, as long as you eat enough calories, right? Well, what if you have a digestive system issue that makes it harder to be able to process that amount of volume of food? So you're eating this very, very low protein food, like potatoes are like 1% fat, like 6% protein, then bananas or something similar to that. And so you do have to eat almost an excess Mm -hmm. to to get, or, you know, excess compared to a regular person, meaning like 3000 or more to get certain levels met. Um, I don't think it's an issue most of the time, but if you, if you're unable to process that much food and that much volume, but you can mediate that and you can do something that's easy on your system, but still fill in the gaps of your essential amino acids or, or fatty acids. I think right. that that's reasonable because most of the time it's so easy to get with like one piece of anything, uh, unless you're eating like a caloric deficit. Mm-hmm. Cool. Awesome. Great stuff there, AJ. Um, do you want to move on to the next question? Yeah, sure. Let's Great. Sure. Um, I'll, I'll ask it if that's fine, if that's okay with you. Yeah. So, um, my turn now, this is, uh, this is for all, this is for all, all communities here. Okay. Now it's about the, the people in the starch community, the starch the people in the keto, the people in the carnivore, raw, vegan, vegan, any community. Just because I, I have seen people in like the keto community be like, oh, I'll, I can eat as much, I'll eat as much fat or whatever they're eating over there, and you butter. can lose, you'll lose weight, you know. Don't drink a cup of butter. Yeah, or even even um, during Rider, he says like, just carb up, eat as many carbohydrates as you possibly want to lose weight. Right. Now, eat my as question. Gummy bear, gummy bears as you want. <laughs> yeah, my question is, are the people losing weight within these specific communities, whichever community you're in, Mm -hmm. are they losing weight because of calories in calories out or are they losing weight because they are restricting a certain macronutrients and they're able to essentially adjust their, not, I don't want to say adjust their body, but um, they can like maybe bypass something in their body that allows them to lose weight more you know do you see what i'm saying or they're, they're able to get around a certain uh, mechanism in the body uh to help them lose weight or maybe if they are eating a certain way um maybe their body is just functioning better and it's allowing them for it's, it's allowing their body to reach homeostasis and lose that extra weight but anyways my, my question still is are people losing weight because of calories in calories out? That's that, that's, that's the main question I'm asking here, you know? So let's just take someone who's like in the raw vegan community, fruit community. They say, Oh, look, I went on fruit. I did all this kind of stuff. Uh, I was doing fruit, drinking a lot of juice, you know, eating salads and eating more raw, raw living foods as much as I wanted. And I lost weight. Now I think you got a question. Were they counting calories? Probably not. Um, were they, I think it's pretty uh, actually, typical for people to count calories now. Pretty typical, you think? In the raw food. I would think in the raw food, it's tip- maybe everyone doesn't do it, but I think they do know about it. Right. Um, uh, were they counting the calories? Were they exercising? You know, what exactly were they doing to reach their goals? And um, I think for some people, 
they don't they don't they might not even know you know they're just living their lives you know they're not really paying attention to it it's just happening it's just going you know um so yeah that's my that's my question do you you understand my question like even give it to me one more time specifically so just refresh me yeah 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 no doubt are people losing weight because of calories in calories out simple as that i think regard yeah because regardless of community i think some people definitely are i think some people it's something different right fair enough like (laughs) like there's so many people that are starving themselves and losing weight in like a bad way but there's so many people who are like paying attention to calories and like not overeating on bull crap but they're not carving up they're not fixing their 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 metabolism by forcing themselves to eat right and they're doing great like look at uh what's his name ben the guy that's vegan Ben. you know i'm talking about the guy that's the fitness guy ben uh oh uh yeah 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 Uh, josh's friend josh's friend yeah right like Um, he looks awesome and he talks about being in a caloric deficit he doesn't look like he's malnourished at the least no well i mean he's ripped right he's totally ripped i don't think if you're if you if you get it put into the category of like uh you know over training and under eating like it's automatically like some kind of eating disorder it's like no it's yeah. a result it's a result oriented thing right um i mean he's doing a lot of things other people aren't able to do despite if they eat fucking ten thousand calories or not right so i right. think that uh some people thrive i think on completely eating enough and in general i think that i'm that type of person if let's say my biological need is like four thousand mm-hmm. i'm going to function better but not if i can't handle eating four thousand because right. of some other issue going on right so i think that it's probably a good idea unless it's, in some instances it's a good idea to slightly under eat if you're someone who's overweight and you're eating enough still to be actually satisfied and nourished and what i mean by that is like a doug lyle mcdougall type of calorie deficit because yeah. they talk that way they talk about it being less calories, but still right. enough nourishment that you're going to succeed. I'm not talking about starvation. I'm well, yeah. And like processed garbage. Right. Well, that's, that, that's actually what I want to bring up here because it is something that Dr. Lyle and Dr. McDougal will bring up a lot. They'll say that like you can eat um, as much starch as you want until you're satisfied. But then I question, like, I question, um, let's say you do eat enough starch, but let's say, let's say you are mixing in like vegetables and maybe some greens and um, whatnot. Like you're not just doing, cause if, you, if let's, let's, let's just say you do all starch, like all potatoes alone, then like, you're going to, you, you should be able to get, you hit your caloric needs. But like, if you do, like I was saying right. 10 seconds ago, like potatoes and vegetables and greens, then you might not hit that caloric need as much. So right. that's what, I, that's what I'm questioning is like, like it could be easy to miss because you're focusing on low density foods. Like yeah, really exactly. So it's like, maybe you are eating a lot, but maybe you really are on a caloric deficit. So that's why you are losing yeah. weight. You, you see what I'm saying? So, so maybe, it, maybe, maybe they are, maybe they really yeah. like, yes, you can eat as much as you want, but right. it is because that food that they're, that they're eating has less units of energy than fat. I mean, fruit's you know? a perfect example. Cause it has calories, but it's not like this crazy amount of calories. So people can literally all eat it all day and be stick figures. Right. Right. And like, I, that's the thing. I also don't think it's a, a matter of like eat less and move more. I think that for some people uh, it'll be the other way where it's like, it's dependent. Maybe they start it to, you know, let's say eat, eat a healthier diet and they can eat so much more calories with mm-hmm. these healthy foods. Mm-hmm. Let's say they're eating 2,000 calorie foods of standard American. Then they go on 2,000 calories of McDougal. All of a sudden, they might eat two or three. They might eat five or 600 more calories or 1,000 more calories because their system's healthier and they can handle eating more food. And the only reason they were stuck at 2,000 before is because their body couldn't process all that sludge and shit. Right, all the crap. So like now it's like, oh, your metabolism's healthy. Your digestion's good. So now you're you energized. Can you're more. moving your body. Yeah. You might see, start eating way more calories, and that's good because that's right. what you need. right. See, my whole thing with like the calories in, calories out um, conversation, just because we're on this topic, is because yeah. like I, I learned from Lyle that there's a law, there's the law of satiety. And I, I really hate to bring this up because in animal, we, we aren't animals in nature. 
you know, like we don't like, we're not out hunting for our food. Um, but I guess when you look at an animal in nature, it eats as much as it needs. It eats till it's satisfied. Right. Now that's assuming that this animal has its kill, has its prey, because who knows, you, you could argue that a lion could go a couple of days without eating. Maybe if it, if it doesn't have a food available. Right. So when that, when that lion does catch its prey, I'm sure it's going to eat as much as it needs. It's going to eat until it it's, can. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to eat until it's satisfied, you know? I think it's going to eat past that satiation because, like you said, it's not a consistent amount of right. daily intake. It's the cram circuit, essentially. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah. You, you, you could definitely say that. And another example that I like to use for all the fruitarians out there, <laughs> it's like if you come to a fruit tree that, like, you've been <laughs> – you're out in nature, you're on, you, you finally just got to a fruit tree, you know, it's abundance of fruit. It's everywhere. Oh my gosh, it's here. Are you just like not going to eat it? You just, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to eat it. You know, I'm just going to let it be. No, you're probably going to eat until it's, until you're satisfied every, all the time. That's, that, that's what, that's what I, I would be assuming at least, you know. Um, it's good if you like it. Yeah. Right. I guess, I guess no that, other, if you have no other option. Right. Um, yeah. So I'm, uh, that that's just the thing with me is like you can be in a caloric deficit but are you actually being satisfied is your body actually are you getting that nourishment from the food and mm-hmm. what does mcdougall say they say or in lyle say them they say like once you move towards a more whole foods less processed food based diet that um your body will it will thank itself and um what do they also say they also say that like once you finally eat the food that you're biologically designed to eat, that some of that weight might come off. So. Yeah. So like John Mc, McDo- Dr. John McDougal, who wrote the Starch Solution and who runs the 10 day McDougal clinic. He says when people come to this conference and they're mm-hmm. eating a starch based diet, rice, corn, potatoes, beans, peas, lentils, fruits and vegetables. He said on the first and second and third day, people are stuffing their face at the buffet. Mm-hmm. And he said on day three or four or five, they actually start eating one plate of food instead of two or three because they're actually meeting their nutritional requirements. Mm-hmm. And the reason why they're overeating in the beginning is because they've actually been starving for this type of stuff. Right. So, and they've also been used to calorically super dense food. Like, you know, one McDonald's burger can be 500 calories. And then you might have to eat five bananas to make that same amount of calories. And of course it's a different type of calorie as well but it's a lot more volume. Most people will be like, eat five bananas. It sounds sickening, but yeah. Two, one oh, it's is fine. Yeah. Right. It's, it's so funny. People are like, I don't even know how you eat that many bananas. If I, I eat one banana, I'm full. There's you so know? many clips that I see MP that I, I mean to send you. And then I don't like, I was listening <laughs> to this guy, Mark James Gordon, and he's talking about bananas and he was, he was like a raw vegan. And he's like, I mean, who can eat more than two bananas? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody <laughs> besides us. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, anyways, let's move on to the next, uh, next question. I think AJ and I, I think we discussed that pretty well. Um, AJ, your next question that you have. Yeah. So, so um, I've, so far I have asked my two questions. AJ has asked one. He's about to ask his second question. You got it. So MP, what would you say is the best source of calories, like food group, best source of calories, the best source of calories, right? Like rocks um, wouldn't count because rocks don't give us any calories. <laughs> but like Cheetos could, it could be like Cheetos give you like the complete spectrum of nutrients. Right, right. Now, the best source, so like the best source of calories, um, I, 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 this, this might sound annoying, but it, it's really going to depend on, on your goals and what you want to achieve. Yeah, okay, well, let me phrase it in a different way because I don't okay. do it that way. Let me phrase it in a way that's like, for the general public, not for someone specific, right. not someone with Crohn's disease, like right. not someone with like some kind of degenerative brain issue, like for the general public, most of the time, what do you think is either like the most nutritious, the most beneficial or whatever? Okay. Um, I think, I think if you want to get your most bang for your buck in one meal, uh, <laughs> like honestly i i think a salad (laughs) is like i mean so the salad not from us like 
it's tough because that's not from a caloric standpoint. I guess from a, from a, from a caloric standpoint, mm-hmm. um, man, put, let's put the, okay, let's put the salad to the side. I, I, I got to focus on the question from a caloric st- standpoint. Cause I right. think there's, I think there's it's two the ways to look at it. Calories. Like there's good, a, like there's low calories in salad, but yeah, right. You can like, dress it up with olives and avocado or whatever. Right. I think if you look at it from like nutrition standpoint, I, I do think like the salads might, might be more, more nutritious, but like from a caloric standpoint, Right. I do think that, um, and this isn't based on price. Like we all know, like, let's say rice is like the cheapest per calorie. It's not, right. we're not going by that. We're going to, if you have unlimited money and you have unlimited of the best of whatever yeah, in your hand, you don't have to prep it. We don't have to worry about any of that. Right. What is the ideal food for most of your calories? Mangoes. hundred percent. Really? Yeah. I you can also, well, it's even more general, general than that. You could say fruit. Yeah. Okay. So like I'm see, talking about like a food group now. Okay. Yeah. So, um, like example being meat in one category, starch, yeah, fruit, see, well, vegetable. That's more what I'm asking. Well, see, that's what, that's what I'm thinking because like you're going to have somebody who does eat fruit, but they don't get satisfied whatsoever. So for them, that's not going to be a good source right. of calories. You know, you have someone who does eat, um, maybe they do, maybe they do eat more starch. Uh, maybe, maybe they feel more satisfied on that. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's funny. AJ and I will talk about this a lot. And, I, and I'll even say to him, I said like, dude, if I only ate meat, I eat like 10 million calories of meat. And I wouldn't be like, I remember I went to this one. Uh, I know this is disgusting, but I went to a Brazilian <laughs> steakhouse one day, like seven years ago. And the amount of meat that I ate there was just disgusting. Like I just kept eating and eating and eating like nonstop, just kept eating. And it's really tough to do that with fruit. <laughs> like a lot, a lot of times fruit, you, you're not just like stuffing. You're just not just completely stuffing your face over and over again. Cause you get so full. Like I was saying in the last podcast, just cause of the water, cause of the fiber, you know, like that, that does fill up your gut. So it's hard to just put so much in there. But if you do take something like meat, you can fill up your gut and maybe not be as satisfied for me at least, you know? So, um, from uh even even with the salads the one day uh i I had my breakfast and i didn't eat for like seven hours and i had my lunch you could say and it was a salad and i was like you know what i'm gonna wait like at least three hours like at least two or three hours to eat my next meal because it was getting close to that time before bed Mm -hmm. and i and i I do i do like to eat at least two hours before bedtime um smart man and i (laughs) and i ate I had like a potato or rice meal or something. I ate that like an hour after because I was like, I was hungry. I was like, let's do it. And I put that, I put it all down super easy. And for me, like at that, at that point in time, that, that, that salad meal, it, it, yes, it satisfied me nutritionally, but it didn't satisfy me to like hold me over for the rest of the day, you know? Mm -hmm. So now to answer your question, I'd, uh, wow it's 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 really it's just so difficult to give a to give a specific answer here um like if you if you put the general population right on mostly fruit do you think it would make the general population better do you think that starch would have to do a better job do you so think more I, organic meat would do a better job so i think i think um like if we go back to your, humanity. well, if we go, if we go to your earlier point, if we put someone on fruit, they're only going to eat a piece of fruit. <laughs> they're going to eat one mango and be full, you know? So, um, I, I feel like if we took someone from like this, a standard way of eating, I would say putting them more on starch first would be more satiating and would, would allow them to eat more at first. So, so starch for them, like oatmeal, uh, quinoa, rice, both brown and white or red or black, whatever rice, wild rice, you know, potatoes. Um, it's just funny. Like, I'm just so simple. I eat rice and potatoes. Like, it's it's almost like, it's it's almost like, I don't even know what other sources of starch there are besides rice and potatoes. (laughs) I know there's like a plethora of other grains. Honestly, I feel like bread low key is like, it's like a decent calorie source that like, even like sourdough, you know, or wheat, like wheat bread. Like, I feel like, I feel like that that, 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 that like never gets talked about because it's like, oh, it's gonna, it takes a year to get passed through you, you know? 
um, which uh, I'm just saying that that's what people say, but I don't really believe that. Other than um, it's the staff of life. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So <laughs> honestly, my final answer is, is um, it's going to be, it's, Oh, it's so tough. <laughs> my final answer. I, I'm gonna go with starch. I'm gonna go with starch for my final answer. So I know that I know people that took a lot. I, I, <laughs> That's a good answer. That took a lot out of me. Um, McDougal but, would praise you. <laughs> I, I'm gonna go just for um, just for someone to start. I'd say starch is the most satisfying. That's that's what you're asking, right? From a calorie yeah. standpoint, from yeah. a calorie standpoint. Right, right, right. Yeah. So how about you? What do you think? Best source of calories. I think, again, if someone was handing you the best thing ever, like, like you didn't have to go shopping for it, you didn't have to wait for it to ripen on the tree, all these things. And I had to choose between I already know starch <laughs> and fruit. Wow, that is hard. Just because I, I don't want to be a fruitarian in the long term. <laughs> <laughs> I think fruit has so much, I think fruit healing wise, I do think it surpasses starch, but I don't think living on fruit surpasses starch. Right. So in the long run, I would say starch in the short run, even in a couple, like for a couple years, if I could have the best quality ever fruit all the time, I'd probably pick that, but I wouldn't want to live that way. Yeah. Cool. See, I would rather, I would rather do fruit and then if i had if i had to or wanted to stay raw vegan i'd rather focus on green juice and salads right because i right. wouldn't want to look like 90 at 35 <laughs> i just think that the people are in denial like if they're just mostly doing that and they're they're living they have like i don't hmm. if they're not hydrating and they're not getting enough rest i don't feel like they're properly able to process that sugar and then it, right. it ends up making them look old. Right. That's all I think it is. I don't think that it necessarily fruit ages you. I don't think that, but if it's stressful in your system because you don't process it very, very well, then I do think it will age you because right. it's stressful. It's a low key consistent stress day in and day out you're intaking. Well, and I think that the opposite of that is the green juice. I think it's so soothing. So, well, and starch is more, more low key as well. I was just reading something about um, like sugar and, it being acidic in your blood or the, or the sugar glycating or something like that. Um, I, if I'm being honest, people, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I don't remember exactly what it was. Um, but I think it honestly was from a study. I think, um, I'm really trying to think. Um, but I feel like, I feel like if you, if you aren't processing your sugar as properly and as well, and it, it, it is causing elevated issues in the blood for, different biomarkers, you know, different markers of health. Um, then there are definitely, there are ways to fix that and getting enough rest is one of them. Yeah. You know, and but people, if you're not going to get the rest and you're just going to eat the fruit anyway and think right. you're not going to have some kind of negative result, right? like there's ideals. And then there's things that you're at, you will actually do. Some people will thrive so well on fruit and they'll do amazing right. and they'll look amazing. Right. I don't deny that, but I don't deny the people who just eat clean fruit and they, they look old. Right. And they look frail and they look thin. Malnourished. Yeah. Yeah, because totally. Who knows what's going on? I right. Mean, yeah, I agree. Call. It's not a judgment call. I mean, I think it's harder to be malnourished on starch, but then you ask the carnivores or the meat eaters, they're like, every vegan looks malnourished. So it's like, there's tears to all these things. Right. And then you look at carnivores and they're like getting their colons removed and whatever. And it's like, you know, they all have their challenges yeah, totally totally um yes yeah, so do do we do you want to move on to, the, to, to our each of our last questions yeah let's do it <laughs> all right i will um i'll ask mine so this is this is it's sort of controversial for me and i don't really know how to i don't really know how to put it you know so um actually maybe i do know how to put it and maybe maybe i maybe i'll have, i think i think i actually have a good answer here I gotta have more confidence in myself. What the heck? I actually I have plenty of confidence. <laughs> I'm just playing around. Anyway, so let's say you take 10 bananas. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's say you take those 10 bananas and you put them in a blender and you blend it up with some water and you drink that. Right. 
Now let's say you have 10 bananas in general and you just eat the 10 bananas. Now for me, I, I can put down 10 bananas for sure. Mm -hmm. Totally can do that. Yeah. Um, if they're delicious bananas, no doubt. Sometimes I like having dates with my bananas. Cause like for some reason, the bananas have it. They've, they've been weird recently for me. I don't, I don't know why. Maybe it's the summer. Maybe it's the heat. Um, but if like, if I have a 10 banana smoothie, that's like not hard to put down at all. And I haven't, I haven't, I, I haven't even had a smoothie in it might have, might even be like a month and a half. I haven't had a smoothie, mm -hmm. but so even still, okay, like let's say that smoothie wasn't sweet enough, and let's say you're adding, so you're adding fruit or you're adding dates to sweeten it up, and all this stuff. Like you could be just loading up the caloric intake there. You know, like let's say you do add sugar. Let's say you add an extra 300 calories of sugar by adding in refined sugar to the smoothie, mm -hmm. and you compare that to just eating 10 bananas. Like there's just, there's just such a difference between eating the food and then drinking the food, in my opinion. And that's the point I'm trying to, that, that's like the question I'm getting at here is that um, I can like, I can eat the food and I can drink the food and like my weight will still be the same regardless of like how much I'm eating for the most part, you know? Um, so do you think there's a big difference in just like actually eating your food versus blending it or juicing it from a caloric standpoint? Do you see, do, does that make sense? Like kind of like yeah. the situation that I'm putting it in, you know? Um, I'm not sure if you have any thoughts. Yeah, I, th I think there's a difference. I think that the process of Chewing it usually is always going to be superior because of a few different things. You're consuming it slower. You're missing your enzymes in your mouth with it. So it means it's actually going to get fully to the most it can be broken down for absorption, right. which means you're going to reach satiation sooner than if you were drinking it. And then that will lead to eating the amount that your body wants versus the amount that um, you could fit in, like I know with a smoothie, you and I could easily drink a 2000 calorie smoothie. No problem. Right. Doing that once for breakfast and then doing it again for lunch and then eating dinner. But right. if we were to eat 2000 calories, it'd be so much harder. It'd be so much harder. Yeah, totally. And it's and like, especially, especially if that exercise is, is high, mm -hmm. whether, whether it be biking or running or no, I'm not going to say swimming because I, I haven't swam. <laughs> I mean, I have swam in a pool, but not like actually like laps and stuff um, or working out. Like there's, de there's definitely a huge difference here, yeah, you know? Totally. And I, I mean, I guess uh, I, I know like the, the, the doctor, the goodbye lupus doctor, um, I forget her name, but I know she's like really big on, the green. So like, right. she's like, cool. Yeah. Like have some fruit, but don't like, don't go crazy. She wants more greens in that smoothie than, than the right. fruit. So, so she might have this huge smoothie, but it might only be like 600 calories compared to like a smoothie that some fruitarians are doing. It's like 1500 calories. It could Easy. possibly be, you know, I mean, even, even in my meal this morning, um, I, I, uh, it, it's, I, I, I like to call it a slurry. So, um, I mash up bananas and usually I just get like the three pound bushels of bananas from Costco. Um, and it's, it's, it's even with that, it's ironic because yes, that's three pounds of bananas and I've never weighed it before, but like when you actually take the banana out of the peel, I wonder how many pounds that actually is of bananas, right. you know, it's I probably like two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's probably two and a, maybe two and a quarter. So and, and in, in, in the back of my mind, I've been thinking like, crap, I really do need to uh, measure that, like get some scale and measure that to actually see. Cause I've never actually counted my calories and I actually would like to see how many calories I oh, really have really? never counted before. No. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, so uh, as I was saying, you blend up, you mash up bananas. I like to add some cinnamon and then, um, I'll add some frozen fruits and then I'll add dates. And today I like, I just took like two and a half handfuls of dates and just threw them in there. And I mean, I think, I think like 120 calories 
is of dates is like five of those pitted dates, maybe a hundred calendars or something. Mm-hmm. I mean, I might've had 30 dates. And I mean, I, I, I had a lot of dates in there. Wow. About the only date I can get. Um, <laughs> but that my point is that meal, that meal might've been like 1300 calories, maybe even 1400 calories. And I'm eating that for breakfast. Now, again, I haven't, I, I didn't eat till like really, 4 30 because i'm just my that's just how my day went unfortunately um that was probably about six hours later seven hours later um but still i was eating so much in one meal now if i were just if i were just eating the banana and eating the dates alone i probably wouldn't have eaten as much food you know so plus you're not going to want to win the other big thing about the whole scenario is like, if you're eating, you're going to stop when you're done, but you could be like, all right, I'm really sick of this smoothie, but I'm going to finish it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like you're just like, I'm just going to do it because you, you don't, don't want to leave it in the fridge. You don't want to waste it. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, <laughs> so now, so now my answer to my own, to my own question here, and I know that this really wasn't a question. It was just kind of like an overall, an overall thought. Um, but your body is going to know. So even if you do have um, bananas and dates and maybe you do need more food, you'll, you'll get, you'll, you'll just eat more at lunch, you know? So like, like I was saying, like I was saying, okay, I had that. Let's just, let's assume it was 1400 calories. Okay. I didn't eat till like six hours later. So clearly that kept me satiated and full until, until I ate the next meal. Um, but if I ate less, I probably would have needed more two hours before that next meal. So um, let's, I ate at like 9, 30, 10. I probably would have needed something around 1, 32, you know, but I didn't, I felt fine. I felt okay. I felt clear, you know? Yeah. So I feel like um, if you are focusing on your caloric intake and um, maybe you want to eat more, maybe you want to eat less, I, I, I do feel like, your body's going to know and your body's going to really tell you what it needs. And, um, like AJ was saying earlier, you know, like, Oh, it doesn't mean just go eat Doritos and go eat whatever crap. But, um, Hey, if you want more fruit, I think eat more fruit, you know, if you want more salads maybe your body needs the minerals, you know, maybe, maybe that's what you're craving. So, um, I I just feel like your body is going to listen. Your body's going to know, you know, Mm -hmm. So I know my, I know my body knows for the most part. <laughs> my body gets confused as hell. <laughs> well, I, I mean, you're I like, was, I was like so long on fruit. And then I had that consultation with Dan and he was like, bro, get a salad, go get a salad and get like fat on there and get avocado and olives. And I ate that and I was like, this is like the best meal I've ever had. <laughs> it's like I was so low in like all those things, the minerals and everything. Right. I was just like, holy right. shit. Right. But, yeah. So, so anyways, just with my question there, I just want to like raise that. I just want to like raise some attention to that, to that point of like what people are actually doing out there. You know, they're blending up all these, they're blending up this food. They have this huge smoothie and they're putting it down and then boom, like maybe, maybe they are hungry. Maybe they're not hungry later. I know um, last point I'll make about this is when I was doing like the big smoothies during my style and I was adding the refined sugar, I noticed that I was actually hungrier even like three hours later, because I feel like I, my body wasn't being nourished. You know, like I was doing a huge banana smoothie with like frozen strawberries, but was that actually really nourishing me? And I feel like it wasn't. And for the amount of activity that I was doing, it, it made it even worse. And I was like, oh my gosh, I need so much more now because I'm also exercising so much and I'm biking so much. Like, yeah, just keep giving more, you know? So um, that was also a very fast paced time for me. And I just felt like it was just like, I was just moving so fast. And once I finally like slowed down a little bit and like took it easy on the biking and really found my rhythm with like my working out and my eating and then everything started to normalize, you know, I wasn't like super starving after just having a smoothie, you know, and I, and I really have cooled off with like the refined sugar stuff. So, Mm. um, because doesn't that like, doesn't that signal like pathways in the brain? Like, doesn't like, yeah, it's a it's like an exciter, not a toxin. It's not a toxin, but I mean, right. it's like, uh, because does, it's does, so does, dense, it's going to give you more feedback. Right. Pleasure trap. Yeah. Does, does it signal dopamine, the refined sugar? I, I don't know. So, but... yeah. 
Well, calories do in general. Okay. But it's just how much you're getting. Right. Right. That's so why, anyways, like, you've been eating like as much pizza and chicken wings as you want. And all of a sudden you're eating a Buddha bowl. You're like, this sucks. Yeah. Even if right. You do that for a little while. You're like, this is actually incredible. Right. Right. But to say, to build off what you were just saying, guys, there's a huge difference between someone who's been under eating and is really hungry. And then they eat something and it triggers a binge because their body's like, please, like I'm so hungry. finally yeah. eat more. Right. And there's the other side of that where it's like, you have someone who's pretty normally nourished, but maybe they have a specific issue, whether it be diabetes or some kind of like hormonal issue. And you say, you know, they can drink a liter of apple juice and that will throw them into like, oh my God, I'm starving now. And their blood sugar swinging all over the place. Right. And like, they're peeing like crazy. Like those are two different things, Mm -hmm. but people look at them like they're the same. Like you drink apple juice and you feel terrible. And people are like, it's because you needed it. It's because your calories, like, it's because it's showing you you're hungry. No, I just, if you dip your blood sugar, you're going to want more to eat. Right. And I think that you having some pretty rock solid uh, ability to, to process carbohydrate, even you doing the big banana smoothie and adding the sugar saying like you felt so hungry so much quicker. I don't think it's because, you know, maybe you were at the time, but I don't think it's because you're, you're necessarily starving. Right. 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 Triggering different mechanisms. I mean, if you, it's easy to like intermediate fast all day, but as soon as you eat something, you're like, okay, now I want to eat. Right. right? <laughs> but it's easy before you eat to not do that. Yeah, totally. Totally. Awesome. Let's move, let's move on to AJ, your last question here. I think we're getting to about an hour. So um, let's, uh, let's talk about your last question. All right. For you. So this is specifically for you. So we're not talking about the general public. We're not talking about like ideal for specific people. It's just about you. Okay. Um, Michael Patrick Buckley. Do you, for, for yourself, are you more, do you, would you prioritize more if you had to choose one over the other, more focusing on nutrients or more focusing on calories? An example being Dr. Furman. It's all about the nutrients, right? The nutritarian diet, berries, mushroom, G bombs, greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, right. seeds. Right. Then you have McDougal on the other side of that. If you're using plant-based people. Right. And Lyle's talking about, it's kind of really hard to have a nutrition deficiency for you in the long run for the rest of your life. Would you rather eat a very bland, you know, bland, like starch based diet with really minimal nutrients or would you rather focus on like the most nutrient foods? <clears throat> it's, it's so, it's so tough to like, just choose one or the other because I am a, a big fan of, of doing both, you know, of doing like, okay, like I, I get my starch in, I get my fruit in, but I also get my salads in where I get like the mineral density, you know, um, just from like, if we're looking at like a caloric need versus like a nutrient standpoint, me personally in my life, I'm more on the side of like the caloric need side. Mm-hmm. Um, like I, I do want to ensure that I am eating, eating enough food. I've seen just so many benefits over the past, um, year over the past year from just like, just, just eating more, just getting more in me, you know, right. um, one being more energy it's two being, I feel like I sleep better. I feel like I sleep deeper. Um, three being I'm carved up, you know, <laughs> like legit. I feel, I feel more stable. I feel more like at peace and at ease just to back up my point there. Um, but I, I will say that I did run into some issues when I'm just doing like only fruit and white rice with sugar. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I do feel like um, it, it's vitally important to, to work in the salads, you know, to work in some vegetables. So even when I do have a meal, I don't do like a, oh, a 50-50 meal of vegetables and rice or vegetables and potatoes. No, like I go hard on the rice. I go hard on the potatoes. But I also ha- I have a fair sharing of veg- a, fair, a fair serving of vegetables with my meal, you know, Um usually when I do my salads, I usually do one head of romaine. You know, I don't, I don't, I'm not doing two huge heads of romaine lettuce and just eating all that, you know? So, um, 
Yeah, I'm definitely more on the side of the the caloric side. So more towards like the McDougal Lau side of it. And um, but that's that's not to say that like Furman that that what's Furman Furman's promoting isn't like bad or um anything like that's that's what even what he promotes is to it's it's unbelievable and i i actually really appreciate it because it it he, he's telling us like hey eat nutrient dense foods get these benefits from these foods and you're going to live a healthy long life you know mm-hmm. so yeah how about you it's interesting that out of all the plant-based doctors out of the main ones that we're aware of mm-hmm. as McDougal, it seems as though Furman kind of recommends the lowest calories but he's the only one that's really athletic an athlete yeah that's see that dude i i just don't understand it whatsoever like he i mean i I just hear it all the time from people who say like oh if you do if you do have a lower calorie intake that your stress hormones are going to be higher because you don't have enough glycogen in your liver to fuel yourself you know so um you are going to be running off uh the cortisol, the adrenaline, uh, lack there's, there's might be some leftover lactic acid that you could be u- utilizing as fuel. Um, maybe even some of the protein, maybe the fat that you're, you're, you're diving into, uh, some of your emergency, um, some of your emergency fuel, you know? So that's just the thing is like, how is he doing? Like, how are you doing this without getting enough in you? You know, is it, is it just your spirit? <laughs> like David Wolf said, you know, he's running off spirit. <laughs> you know, is it just your passion? Is it just his drive? Does he have this? You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I just, what was he, a figure skater? Is that what he was? He was an Olympic uh, ice skater. Yes. So maybe, maybe he didn't need as much as a biker, you know? And it's, it's always interesting because um, I always like to ask guys who are bikers, like, hey, how much do you eat? Like, do you like eat a lot of food because like you're burning through it so much, you know? Um, I, and I forget what their answers are. I, I haven't, I, I haven't really talked to a biker in a while just because <laughs> I mean, I haven't been as much on the bike as I not like I would like to, but I just haven't been on the bike as much. Uh, I've been more focused on calisthenics, but um, yeah, I, I still don't understand Furman's way of it and being an athlete. So I'm not sure if you, I, I feel like, if, do you have any thoughts on that? I mean, not really. Yeah. Like, I mean, I have <laughs> thoughts on it, but right. I don't have the answer for it. Right. I don't know if he like ups their bean intake and like, cause I know he still recommends oatmeal and rice, brown rice and things. He just doesn't try to make them the focus. They're right. like, they're the side dish. Yeah. The other things. Right. And I'm the opposite. Right. So. I mean, it's generally, that's how it would be. Yeah. yeah. But once again, like you say, it's about meeting the need, you know, if I do have a need where I feel like I do need more right. mineral density in my diet, then I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'll ensure I get that, you know, yeah. and if my, man, my body, the way I look at it, my body's get my body will make up for the next day. Like if I'm hungrier the next day, I'll eat more, you know? So yeah. cool. Cool. Awesome. Uh, that's all. <laughs> I think we're good together. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, once again, if you guys have got this from the podcast, we really appreciate listening. Um, today's talk was on calories. Uh, and once again, I wanted to, I wanted to stress that, um, hungry people, that's why, um, I feel we can be so powerful is because we are talking about actual day-to-day live life events events activities situations you know we want to bring that to your attention we want to we aren't uh, saying plug it plug this formula in right so. right we, we really want to make um tangible we want to make what our experience is tangible yeah exactly you know and if any of this can relate to your life and you feel you, you benefit from anything that we say or anything that we talk about please please share it please let us know so um aj any final thoughts Carbo. Carbo, baby. I love it. My final thoughts are uh, stay up, be great, and always keep it on baby. <laughs> stay hungry. Have a good one, guys. <laughs>